All right, good afternoon. Here we are again for another uh, lovely lecture of ENGR 2302 Engineering Dynamics. We're going to be continuing <coughs> with part two of lecture 17, and this time we're going to look at a new topic, which is well, still impulse momentum, but a particular case of that of eccentric impacts. So let us consider eccentric impacts. And we've looked at impacts previously again, and those are mainly analyzed through a conservation momentum, as we've kind of seen. Uh, here. So let us consider eccentric impacts. Eccentric impacts. Consider eccentric impacts. So uh, consider two potatoes or generalized uh, two-dimensional um, plane bodies, two rigid bodies, and um, let us say that I'll just draw them as potatoes. Actually, I want to do this like this. So let's say we have some eccentric impacts. They're the two objects are coming together here. And let's say they have two different velocities that aren't directly lined up in any way. So maybe I have VA and VB. Um, oh. I've ruined everything forever. So consider that one has BA, this is going to be object A, this object B. Uh, then first let me line up, describe the normal line. This is perpendicular to the contact points of the surfaces. And then let's say uh, here, there, these are going to be the um, forces here. The normal force will be applied along this plane, assuming no friction, etc. And however, though, there is going to be a um, a velocity, initial velocity, VA here, something like this, and VB here. Could be at any angle, though. Uh, then let us consider this and say. Uh, there's going to be some amount of, um, let's say here, how might I explain this? There'll be a, some net change in velocity, a change in velocity. So let me redraw this a bit. So these are the initial velocities, VA and VB. Then there would be some change in velocity. And this might be something like, There'll be a change in velocity, so initial velocity, and change in velocity, something like this, maybe a UA and then a UB. And these do not necessarily have to be equal and opposite, but they would be related mathematically. And then there'll be a then there'll be a final uh, UA prime, or sorry, VA prime and VB prime. Some general uh, UA prime and, uh, sorry, VA, VA prime and VB prime. And these potatoes keep changing shape from drawing to drawing, it's amazing. And so then, then again there'll be a final uh, VA prime and VB prime here, okay? Now, um, one thing we need to consider though is that this these will have both parallel and perpendicular components. So initial velocity, um, final velocity, or change in velocity, uh, in velocity, and final velocity. Then, if same mass, if the objects are the same mass, the uh, UAN, in other words, the normal component of the change in velocity for uh, object A, is going to be equal to UA, uh, UBN. UBN, the normal component of the change in velocity of object B. 
okay? And there's going to be a period of restitution and a period of deformation, but deformation first. So uh, when two objects collide, there is a period of deformation where they collapse into each other, well, not into each other, but they collapse and under compression, really. Um, so first is the period of deformation. where there will be some impulse equal to our, our, our force R, for the, the um, or we can just call this force R, is equal to the uh, integral of R dt. And then we'll have a period of restitution, very similar to previous impact cases of restitution. This is sort of microanalyzing the idea of, impu uh, of impacts or eccentric impact, where impulse is equal to the integral of PDT, where just these are some contact forces spread between them. Then, uh, here, the principle of, an, and to apply impulse momentum here, So R is going to be our um, deformation force, and P is going to be our restitution force. And we say, again, we bring this thing up, E equals the coefficient of restitution. The coefficient of restitution. And this is equal to the integral of R dt divided by, um, so R dt divided by P dt. Um, R dt uh, divided by P dt, integral of P dt. And we'll look at this. Or uh, another way to think of this is E is uh, equal to Vb prime uh, n, the normal, minus Va prime. Again, we're looking at the normal components because that's where the um, that is where the thing occurs, where the uh, force is applied. It's a normal force, assuming these bodies are frictionless on their surfaces. Uh, Va prime n, the normal component of velocities of each of these, um, divided by, so this is the final, the normal component of, the, basically this is the difference in the, this is the difference in the uh, normal components of the final velocities of A and B, uh, divided by the, uh, VAN, the initial, minus VBN. Uh, VBN. And these velocities are for the points of impact. So if the object is rotating, then different points on, its, on the body may have different velocities, but these velocities are for the points of impact. And this will be important and work through a few examples. All right, so let's consider this. And I am going to use the good old ballistic pendulum. I have an example involving a good old fashioned ballistic pendulum. Okay, so maybe this will be example three for today. And consider a, a square panel or a ballistic pendulum. Now usually, I guess this really wouldn't be a ballistic pendulum. Usually for a ballistic pendulum, you'd want to use something with a longer moment arm, not just a big square panel. But let's consider this anyway. So I have a square panel like this. So let's say I have a big square panel. Uh, so I have a pivot, and then hanging from this is a large square panel. And these are perfectly straight lines in a perfectly uh, uh, square form. If you don't, if it doesn't look like that to you, again, optical distortion. Uh, so anyway. Uh, this thing will be 18 inches by 18 inches, 
And I'm going to assume that it's supported right from the top. So I'm assuming that this pin is basically right at the edge, which isn't literally possible, but it simplifies our calculations a bit. So this is 18 inches by 18 inches. So I have this big square panel, and this thing weighs 20 pounds, a 20 pound square panel. And apparently because I am a walking Texas stereotype, when I want to see how objects behave, I shoot them. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to take a bullet and I'm just going to shoot this square panel with it and see what happens because that's how, um, that is how I, as a stereotypical Texan, decide to investigate how objects behave. I just shoot them. Um, anyway, thankfully my doctor doesn't work the same way. Anyway, so a bullet is going to come along here, and it is going to be uh, the the distance from the bullet uh, from the p from the pivot to this is going to be 14 inches. So this is a this is going to be an eccentric impact. And what makes this an eccentric impact is that the um, is that the center line or the line of velocity of the colliding object does not line up with the center of mass of the other object, or the centers of mass don't line up. So uh, this is going to be 14 inches here. If this were 9 inches, then it would not be eccentric in, an eccentric impact, and this would be a little bit uh, easier. And I will say this bullet has quite a high initial velocity. This bullet has an initial velocity of, uh, let's say, uh, 1,500 meters per second. And I'm going to call this, and so here again is the center of mass. And this thing, VB, and this is going to be object B, and this is equal to 1,500 feet per second. Feet per second. And this uh, VA, this is A, panel A, and VA uh, initial, VA1, um, or actually just let me call it, let me say VA, because I think that we were using the VA and the VA prime for these. Uh, actually, let me think about this. I'll just use VA uh, for the initial velocity. A initial velocity is zero. And I want to find, and so this thing is going to, this is not going to go right through the block. Instead, it's going to become embedded in the block. And uh, basically, bullet becomes embedded in block. I have a square panel. A square panel on a pivot. Bullet strikes panel and becomes embedded. And is embedded in panel. Uh, find two things. Uh, a, the angular velocity the angular velocity of the panel immediately after uh, embedment of the panel uh, immediately after the bullet is embedded Um, like we, maybe we can just say sticks or embedded or I'll use the proper word is embedded not the immediately point of impact but after embedment uh, embedded and let's find the reaction at A the impulsive reaction at A Assuming that uh, the impact takes six seconds. Assuming uh, impact time is six seconds. So it's going to embed in over the course of an enormously short period of time uh, of six seconds. Now, there's one missing piece of information that I need to give us in order to solve this problem. What is it? Hmm. There's one important missing piece of information.
I know the initial velocities of everything. I know the mass of the block. What don't I have? The mass of the bullet, yes. In order to do, in order to apply impulse momentum, I need to know the mass, mass of ob both objects. And so, and I, but I am told that v, that the, the mass of b, mb, is going to be 0 0.05 pounds. 0 0.05 pounds. All right. So basically, an, an ounce. One. Well, actually, no. Not a little. Uh, approximately an ounce. A little. A little less than that. Okay, so I'm going to use the same approach that I've used for everything, which is to draw out three diagrams, an initial momentum, a final momentum, and an impulse between them. All right, so um, let us consider this. Now, um, I'm going to draw this in terms of the system. I'm going to draw this in terms of the system. So um, I could try drawing this as two separate objects. But I think since we only are looking for some limited information, I think it can be beneficial to look at this from the point of view of the entire system, which means I don't need to, if I do it, uh, yes? Um, isn't it point zero 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 six seconds? Did I write that down wrong? Uh, let me check. Oh, thank you. Oh, that, that, yeah, that is a little slow for a bullet. Um, <laughs> six seconds, sorry. Uh, is it summer yet? Uh, zero, zero. Um, Zero six seconds. Thank you. That, that makes a little more sense. Can you imagine if the impact taking six entire seconds? You're like, you see this bowling flying along at 1,500 feet per second, and then it stops, and just one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, just taking six seconds to become flying and pedic. <laughs> that would be a bit silly. Um, now, because I'm looking at this from the system point of view, I don't need to consider the force of impact on the bullet itself. So I will analyze this. Since we weren't asked for the impact force, we were, the, we were asked for the support force, I can look at this from a systems point of view. From a combined system point of view. Point of view. In other words, the, the force the bullet, imp, uh, the bullet impacting will not matter. Uh, we do not need to consider the force of the bullet of the, the um, bullet impacting and becoming embedded. It can be neglected. It can be neglected. Uh, now, so there's this. So because of that, I do not need to consider the impact force, at least in terms of the bullet, the force of the bullet itself striking the, um, uh, striking the uh, panel here. Uh, if you need help after being shot, never come to me asking for assistance because I say, well, from a system point of view, nothing has changed. We can ignore the internal forces between you and the bullet. I, I, I sit down and look at you and say, well, from a system's point of view, nothing has changed. Um, for the record, I wouldn't actually do that, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this here. Looks like I'm drawing some handbags or something, but um, very weird handbags. So I have the square panel three times. And I'm going to have this plus this equals this, where this is initial momentum. Impulse. And final momentum. Oh, uh, final momentum. Uh, then I can label this as, well, the initial momentum. Initially, the only momentum present will be the bullet. And this is MBVB. Uh, MBVB. MBVB. 
then uh, in our impulse, what forces do I need to consider? What forces do I need to consider for the impulse? Because again, I'm a analyzing this from the system's point of view. So again, I am not going to need to consider the um, I'm not going to need to consider the contact force between the bullet and the block or bullet and the panel. So instead, the only the only impulses that matter are going to be these reaction forces. So this is point, let's say A. So I would have A X delta T and A Y delta T. A Y delta T. And then at the end, I have, and again, let me let me clear away points G here, G here, and G here. And then our momentum. At the end, I'm going to have linear momentum here. Uh, let me just say this is OMP for mass of the panel times V2, uh, maybe V bar 2, and an angular momentum of um, IP, IP times omega 2, the um, moment of inertia of this square times omega 2. All right, and this is what I'm going to use to solve through my um, my system here. So and again, this is impulse initial momentum of system. This is impulse of system, or I should say, perhaps on system. And this is the final momentum of system. Omega two. All right, moving along. So let's find this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to look at the rotation. And I'm going to do a uh, sum of moments about A. With the, and I'm, consider, I'm calling the support here um, support A again. This is support A. So I'm going to do a sum of moments about A. So let's do a sum of moments about A. So I'm going to look at everything that causes rotation about point A. About point a. Now, um, one thing I again want to emphasize that I've done a few times, uh, even though this thing can only rotate, it won't be translating, you know, flying across the room or something, but in this case, I have to consider translational or linear momentum. Why? Why do I have to consider rotational momentum? Why do I have to consider linear momentum in this problem? Exactly, because the center of gravity is not the, the rotation point. If the center of gravity is the rotation point, the object cannot have linear momentum. If it's not, if they are two different points in space, then you can have both linear momentum and rotational momentum, even though the thing can't really um, translate a long distance. Okay, so um, looking at a sum of moments about A, uh, MBVB, and these are not really a sum of moments as much as sum of impulses, MBVB uh, times the uh, the arm length of 14 over 12 feet. Uh, 14 over 12 feet. I just want to. I, I have my uh, velocity in feet per second, so I'm just going to do that and translate my uh, distances to feet. Uh, plus zero. This is the initial momentum. So this is basically initial momentum. Actually, no, sorry, that's not right. Uh, this is really, this is my initial momentum. Uh, initial momentum. This, however, is my impulse. Why can I say there's no impulse? Clearly there's impulse in the system. It's, 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 it's going to have a change of momentum. Why can I say the impulse is zero? Well, we can say that the impulse is zero because I'm summing moments about the about point A. And what will produce a um, what will produce a um, an impulse, a change of momentum is a uh, the the support forces, but they will not generate any kind of moment about that point. But anyway, and this is equal to IP uh, the moment of inertia of this a point of, of the particle, a particle the panel, sorry, times omega two, uh, times omega two, 
And essentially what's happening here is that um, the all of the uh, velocity of the bullet represented as the angular momentum of that is going to be translated into um, angular momentum of the panel rotating about the um, rotating about its uh, side there. And then I can say, okay, well, um, looking at this, um, IP omega 2, actually that's not quite right, sorry. Um, that's not quite right, sorry. Um, plus equals zero equals, let me look at this. Um, this is going to be MP uh, V2, the linear momentum um, 2, uh, times its uh, it, tur it turned into a moment, 9 over 12th beat, plus IP omega 2. There we go. So notice we even needed, if we're looking at a case of rotation of moments, we need to translate the final linear momentum and consider the um, rotational momentum represented by that. So this then is going to be the final momentum. So this is basically the linear momentum interpreted as an angular momentum. And we need to consider that on this kind of problem. Now, um, let's say, let's see here. I also know that V2, V bar 2, is going to be 9 over 12, uh, 9 over 12 feet times omega 2. 9 over 12 feet times omega 2, uh, times omega 2. And IP, if I, look up, if I go and look up the a formula um, in your book or in some other reference, you can find the formula for the moment of inertia of a square, uh, or a square and it is 1 sixth times the mass times the side length B squared. So that times the mass of the panel times B squared. And this will equal uh, 1 sixth times 20 over 32.2 to turn the pounds into um, a mass, the slugs, 32.2 uh, times, or not to slugs, just to pound mass, uh, divided by 10, uh, with 18 over 12 times the, um, the side length of 18 over 12, just doing everything in, again, doing everything in, um, in feet. And this will come to, um, a value of 0 0.329, 0 0.2329 pound second, um, or pound feet second squared. Isn't that lovely? Pound feet second squared. And then if I take this and this and substitute it into this, I can get, if I then put in all my known quantities, I replace the mass uh, of the bullet, uh, 0.05 divided by 32.2. divided by 32.2 uh, times 1500 uh, times 1500 uh, plus although really in this case you don't really need to convert to by dividing by 32.2 it'll all cancel out in this case times uh, 14 over 12 which is this 14 over 12 here and this is the initial velocity is equal to um, 20 over 32.2, this MP, again, for, for our linear, velo or linear momentum translated into angular momentum, 20 divided by 32.2, uh, times V2, which we know here is 9 twelfths omega 2. So um, I could say 3 fourths omega 2, uh, times the radius, the, the panel uh, square here, or sorry, the um, uh, 9 twelfths omega, two, th uh, 3 quarters omega 2, sorry about that, and then times 3 quarters again for our, this 3 quarters here. Uh, and then plus our IP omega 2, so plus um, 0 0.2329 uh, omega squared, or just, sorry, um, times omega 2. And if you solve all that, I get that omega 2 is equal to 4.67 radians per second, 4.67 radians per second, and therefore V2 is equal to 9 twelfths times omega 2 
9 twelfths times omega 2 if I want if I want v2 and this is 3.5 and well that will be useful later for part B but uh, that is 3.5 feet per second but the real key thing is omega 2 that's what we were asked for and this is 4.67 radians per second uh, counterclockwise here so then for part B I want to look at um, the I want to find the contact forces therein the, so the, the uh, support the forces at the support or the reaction forces you might say so next I can do uh, to find reaction forces do sum of forces in x and y direction on the diagram so we'll have um, if I do a summation on the x components summation across x this will be mbvb uh, mbvb um, plus in this case we actually will have an impulse and it's going to be equal to AX delta T. AX delta T. And it is equal to MP, uh, MP times V2, the final linear velocity. And we are given the time, so we can find the AX fairly easily. And so the rest is just math. It is 0 0.05 divided by 32.2 times uh, 1,500 feet per second plus AX, which is our unknown, times our time of 0 0.0006 seconds. 0 0.0006 seconds. And then the mass here is 20 divided by 32.2 again. Let me clear that's 0 0.05. Isn't that lovely? 0 0.05, 20 over 32.2 and then times our the, velocity, the linear velocity we calculated of 3.50 feet per second. And we can find, if you solve that for AX, you get that AX is equal to negative 259 pounds, or AX equals 259 pounds to the left. 259 pounds to the left. Uh, and then the same vein in the y direction, if I sum in the y direction, and it's not really summi summing forces, it's more summing um, impulses and momentums, I can get 0 plus Ay delta T. Uh, Ay delta T is 0, and Ay is equal to 0. How can that be? How can Ay be equal to 0? The key here is that that may seem strange at first, and the reason it seems strange is well, we know this thing is not is not falling, right? This and this this panel does have mass, but what what did I ask for? Did I ask for the actual reactions? I asked for the impact forces, the impact reactions, and so that's why that, that's why we can have a vertical. Um, that is why we can have a a y of zero. In that, yes, there actually is a reaction force at the panel, but it's the static reaction. It's just the weight of the panel. Um, so, and I guess slightly increased uh, via the weight of the bullet. Now, in the, I could continue here and mention that uh, in this case, we did simplify a bit by, how did we simplify? What is one simplification, we, what, one very big simplification we made, uh, made? Although it wouldn't really matter in this case. Hmm. What did we neglect when working through our momentum? What did we neglect? the weight of the plate after the bullet hit it. So for this, it's negligible. The uh, bullet weighs 0.05 pounds. The panel weighs 20 pounds. It's a small fraction. But what happens if you, that wasn't the case? What if this was, I don't know, a system where, uh, let's say I had a bucket on a rope and I threw a brick into the bucket. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. Very similar problem as conceptually, right? Except the mass of the brick is not negligible compared to the mass of the bucket. I, I could make them equal mass if I wanted to. And so, in that case, it'd be much trickier. It'd be a lot trickier. And what you, or in the case, or in this case, if I didn't want to, um, if I didn't want, if I wanted to consider both of them, I would have to consider the bullet and its and the um, 
I would consider them having the same velocity, but I would just consider, I would treat the bullet as a point mass a certain distance, uh, well, I guess um, 14 inches down from the, from the top. All right, any questions on this? Okay, so hopefully that illustrates the idea of eccentric impacts. I just wanted to present this, uh, work through a quick example on it, and I think that'll do it. So if there are no objections, I think that'll do it for today. And as always, uh, thank you.